good. <laughs> um, that scared that scare you as much as it scared everyone else? Um, no, I think I think it scared everyone else more than it scared me. I was I was always quite confident. No worries. How does that compare to other kind of setbacks or challenges you've faced during camp and lead really up to you? Um, I think look, I think every camp you're you're presented with different challenges. Um, yeah, this wasn't a, wasn't ideal, but a day after I was sweet. It was just at the time it was a bit, I guess, a little bit nerve wracking. But we move on, and now it's the fight. Forget about the dog bite. How long have you been on the coast for? How's preparations going so far? Been here for a week now. Uh, nice and settled now. Uh, staying over at Broad Beach. Got a nice little house. Everything's good. Can't complain, the weather's beautiful. Uh, the training here is great. Uh, smashed out a few rounds of sparring uh, the other day, so yeah, everything's on track. How's your motivation? Um, you know, do you, do you uh, struggle at all to try and find motivation to get up more and more and more and more and take your training to a, a new level every time you fight? Never, never. Um, I guess the the motivation keeps uh, getting bigger and bigger because the prize keeps getting bigger and bigger and the, what's on the line is getting bigger and bigger so um, I think the responsibility is getting bigger as well so I'm just, I'm just, uh, I'm self-motivated, um, I don't need the sort of fight to motivate me. Have you changed up your training in order to prepare for the first Mexican opponent? Uh, I've been fighting pit bulls man. <laughs> Literally, <laughs> no nah, man. Just uh, quite a uh, same. Boxing's quite universal. You go from country to country. You do the same things: sparring, uh, bag work, pad work, game plans, running, road running. It's the same old stuff every time. Same old shit, as they say. Just do it. Keep doing it. Simple. And what's the game plan on Sunday? Punch him more than he punches me. Do you feel like you want to make a statement in this performance? Every fight I go into now is, is, is definitely uh, a statement type, uh, statement type fight. Not just for my, for everyone, but for more for myself. Uh, keep proving myself that you know I'm the best in the division, and I keep keep trying to prove it to the other boys as well, and let them know, and let them all notice that I'm coming. Do you have a prediction? Um, we're on fire. <laughs> and what's your message to a campo? No, I've got no message, man. It's going to be a tough fight. I know that. Um, I know that he's tough, you know. So it could go the distance because uh, I know I know uh, that he's uh, never never back down top fighter, and he's going to be hard to get rid of. But look. I believe in myself, I believe in, in what I go through and uh, I think I think the opportunity will come but I'm ready for a tough fight, that's all it is. And looking through the film, what weaknesses in his game have you been able to identify? It's nothing for me to say now, it's for me to exploit on Sunday. Tim, there's been some other big names, Eric Spence, Terry Yeah, for sure, for sure. I still want the the name Charlo as my number one priority. That's the name that I want on, on my resume. Uh, for me, it's it's now it's become like even let's say if Charlo was to vacate, for me it's not it's not it's not about the belts anymore. It's about the resume and about the names and about the highlights that you put on the resume and, and the, the experiences and journey along the way. So that's what it's all about. And Charlo is my, my aim. That's the, as, as you play in video games, there's the big boss and you've got to get rid of all these little bosses in, on the way to the big boss. And a campo is the next, but Charlo is the big boss that I, that I got my eyes on. I haven't seen it actually. I haven't seen it yet.
But he does get on the piss a lot and start like, yapping his mouth on, on Instagram live. I think mean, that's his problem. Tim, just on the on the strength of Australian boxing, you know, yourself and No Limit have played a big role in the resurgence of Australian boxing over the past five or so years. Uh, does that make you proud? And where do you think Australian boxing is at at the moment? I think we're on a... I think, I think uh, it's not just myself. I think we've got talent in every division. Every division we've got a talented fighter. And, you know, when you think about it, the Maloney boys just did what they did. There's, there's so many big names. I'm proud to be a part of this, this next wave of us, you know, um, of Aussie fighters that are, that are taken on the world. And I'm glad that me and No Limit have combined for a long time now and we've been able to put on these mega shows, you know. This is, this is what it's all about, the journey and the experiences that, that are along the way. You grew up in it, but do you hope it might inspire some young kids, the next generation coming through to, to take up boxing? For sure. Sure. Um, there's a there's a platform now here in, in Australia that we can exploit, you know, and Showtime, Jimmy Lennon Jr., all of this stuff is coming here. It's it's pretty crazy, but, you know. This is not no no more local shows type thing. This is the top of the tree, and we're doing it right here in Australia. And it's part of history that uh, we're all living in now, you know. And, and I'm a part of it, and I'm blessed for that. So yeah, it's it's, it's great to to be in my shoes, and I'm. I'm grateful to be able to, you know, bring that next wave of fighters uh, to be able to fight under me as well. Tim, you've done quite a bit of US media in the last week as well. How have they reacted to to you and your ability to still want to fight after what you've gone through? Yeah, I think there's there's a lot of respect in that. You know, I could have I could have gone the, the easy part, I guess, and just said, you know what, I'm gonna I'm gonna take a little bit of a time off and a bit of rest, but no, it's not me. I'm, I'm again motivated. I've, I feel like I've got this. Uh, I don't know, I feel possessed in a certain way where I just need to unleash. And uh, this fight is going to be a good fight for that. Carlos Ocampo, we've spoken a little bit about the Mexican history of your father's legacy fighting Mexicans. Mm. Carlos has alluded to the fact that he also likes a lot of great Mexican fighters that have fought overseas, plans on bringing that belt back to Mexico. Why is the belt staying here in Australia? Look, I think 22 times everyone said the exact same thing, that they're going to beat me in that. Um, words are cheap, actions speak louder than words. And that's what I do. You know it, you know? I just, I don't need to convince people why I'm going to win. I don't need to tell people this and that. I just do it. And then people, I guess, they believe the hype or they don't. And everyone can have their own opinion about it. There's another big event happening a couple of days after you. Do you have any uh, words for Freddie Fli Fittler and the Blues as well, <laughs> leading into Origin? Oh man, I'm in, I'm in enemy territory right now, eh? <laughs> um, let's get the job done, man. Two, let's go 2-1. <laughs> Our way. <laughs>